Hi everybody, welcome to Eating Peace this week. A very common and interesting thought, sort of a whole entire load of a concept that I've heard many times from people <clears throat> who suffer from compulsive behavior and thinking of any kind, which is all of us. <laughs> but it is a depressive sense of a feeling, a thought, a pattern, an overall belief system, kind of a gross overall belief system that I will never change. This is always going to happen. This is so terrible that I repeatedly experience this pattern. So awful. Such awareness of all the past, you know, moments I've had like with binge eating or compulsion or worry or anxiety or stress or believing stressful thoughts. And then a picture of all where this must be going then. I am going to be 98 years old on my deathbed if I live that long. And I won't be over it. I won't be there yet. I won't be enlightened. I won't be calm. I won't be um, free from compulsion. very incredibly stressful and uh, what a thing to think you know that um, because I've had a pattern of this it will never go away and I will always have to deal with this and I'll contend with this forever I mean it just the immediate setup of that is an awareness of a battle I'm in a battlefield with my own mind and here's what I've really found that's very, very interesting. You fight with that mind, you know, and have another thought that's against the other thoughts that you have. You have this internal, incredible energy and a war going on with your own thinking, apparently. And that, though, is a thought in itself that I am, I'm gonna, I, I need to fight my own other thoughts, <laughs> the own voices, and it really puts you in a schizophrenic experience of fighting against your own mind. What if there's this way of doing the work? And I'm just put this little what if. So as you know, the four questions are, is it true what I'm thinking? So, you know, I need to battle my mind. I need to get over this. I need to stop thinking this. I need to, um, I need to crush <laughs> my thoughts about um, sugar and eating and compulsion and what's wrong with me. I need to get over all that. I need to stop the behavior. I need to, you know, you know, I need to I need to fix myself. I need to like analyze and adjust my own memories and my experience. I need to question everything. Sort of like with this stressful, it's a stressful experience of needing to fix your own thinking. I need to think positively. I need to do the law of attraction. I need to, you know, all that. All right. The questions are, is that true? Oh, yes, 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 I need to do that. Surely my life would be better if my thoughts and my mind were calmer. And I'm not saying that it wouldn't be true. Can I absolutely know it's true, though, that right now, when I've noticed a life with a mind that's very full and, and cacophonous, <laughs> it's a, like an orchestra playing sometimes that nothing is on the same note. You know what that sounds like when people are tuning? Can I absolutely know it's true? I have to do something with this mind or else I have to battle. How do you react when you believe that thought? I mean, I just noticed for me, that keeps me seeking an answer somewhere else. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to follow this guru. I'm going to read this thing. I'm going to go to that retreat. I'm going to never ending. <laughs> Run, run, run. That's how it, that's how it, I react when I believe I need to fix my mind. I need to quit thinking the way I think. Who would you be without that story? That's the fourth question. Who would you be without that thought that you need to fix something about your mind? And it's chattering. It's like a forest of monkeys screaming and 
cuffing and growling and hooting. Who would you be without that thought that you have to fix that and you have to stop? And uh, unless you stop, you're going to keep eating, you know, for the rest of your life or whatever it is that you compulsively feel compelled to do. I mean, it's really interesting, that thought, you know, that comes in sort of subtle in a way, but that just demands fixing your own mind. <laughs> but who would you be without that story? And then there's this way of turning a thought around in the work that is not always, not always, um, doesn't always fit, not always appropriate, doesn't always match or feel right or click in with the work you're doing. But in this one, it could be very, very useful. But first, let's just find the simple turnarounds. So, I have to fix my mind, I have to stop this, I have to do something with my mind. I do not have to. I don't have to. How is that true? What I notice is with all the efforts that I've ever made to quit thinking the way I think, I persisted in thinking the way I think, you know? And then some changes were made not on my own plans, in <laughs> my timeline. I mean, some ways that I thought just naturally stopped, you know? But just to look at the equal and opposite turnaround and find examples for that, I find it sort of peaceful and entertaining. I do not have to fix my mind or stop thinking the way I think. Fascinating, right? Have you ever had a thought but not acted on it or believed it to be true? All the time. Things flash through the mind, you don't act on them. So same with, you know, behavior. Maybe your mind doesn't have to be any different to not behave or to behave a certain way. So I do not have to fix my mind. <laughs> Just so simple. So another turnaround too worth mentioning here is my thinking, you know, thinks it has to fix my mind. <laughs> and that's another thought, you know, deciding that thinking, adjustments of thinking, but with the mind, the mind's going to fix itself. You know, my mind is going to, uh, like, just like the idea I'm going to um, delete my ego. I'm going to stop having an ego, even though we're not even sure, sure exactly what an ego is. But let's say it's the mini self that just wants everything for itself all the time. I'm going to, that's my life's journey is to crush my ego. It, what else would possibly be thinking that than ego itself? It has a, a goal and an intention and a gripping feeling and I'm going to get here and sort of when it's got that energy, it's kind of a dense identity, energy, this must happen. I must get enlightened. <sighs> so I don't know. It doesn't, it just, we can keep trying it. I know the mind keeps wanting to keep trying it. This is my experience, but it doesn't really get anywhere. So let's try that other kind of turnaround, which can actually be super fun in this case. The Yahoo turnaround. Yahoo! Woohoo! My mind isn't stopping thinking. My mind just keeps on running itself. It just uh, is never going to get fixed. I'm having these thoughts forever. Woohoo! <laughs> it's operating the way it operates. It's doing what it needs to do. It's serving a certain purpose. It's actually showing me how to have a mind that's thinking but not believe what's, what it's saying not all the time, to actually feel what's present even with a mind that's chattering or screaming like a forest of howling monkeys. It's also showing me that just because I think it doesn't mean it's true and just because I think it doesn't mean I have to do it. I could have some voice in my mind saying, jump off the roof, you can fly. And I'm not saying that I would have that, but it, it, it can be an equal, equally similar type of um, type of orientation, you know, I'm sure that I can do this. I'm just sure that I'm going to be able to fly at some point. And it's a weird um, kind of paradox because maybe the Wright brothers who were working on flying with contraptions and so hard at that scientific process actually did it. So the 
you know, having a vision or an idea or something that you enjoy and love and you're moving towards can be very exciting too without knowing exactly how it's going to unfold or if you're going to accomplish what you think you're going to accomplish. But I just know with the mind, if you get in a resistant battle with it and you think it needs to change in order for you to be happy, my experience is that's going to be tough. It feels really, really true that when I have, I mean, I notice this is the case. When I have joyful and excited thoughts, I feel joyful and excited. And that feels better than, usually I judge that as better than depressive, heavy, inadequate thoughts. But it's just so changeable and it moves in the full range of the human experience. I wouldn't say, you know what, my final choice is I'd rather just cut out the stuff that is uh, bad, negative, difficult, gross, depressing, ugly. I just want those thoughts gone and to only be happy at all times. I am not sure that that's really, really true. It could be a strange, weird, robotic way of being. I mean, don't we love stories? Don't human beings? Isn't it amazing to see the mind doing its survival impulses, running the way it does, and we didn't invent this thing? You aren't the one totally in control of your own mind. There's a thought that comes. I love how Byron Katie says, did you make that thought happen? What if it's not your fault? What if it isn't you? What if it's just sort of a way this whole thing is hooked up and set up and you get to learn some part of you has an immense ability for intelligence and creativity and watching and observing. I find that's the case with me. You know, when you meditate, if any of you have ever meditated and many of you have, you know, you can sit and have images float through and thoughts about everything. You know, something that happened when you were eight years old and then here comes popping in uh, in your mind of your father when he was younger and then current situations that are underway and the shopping list that you're going to be buying later on that afternoon. I mean, it just pops and chaotically bounces all over the place and yet you sit in the chair. You know, this is your silent meditation time. Did those thoughts force you to get up and out? Sometimes they do. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like they do, but it's not required that you respond to everything that runs through your mind. And what a what an interesting exercise to meditate on, that it's not required for me to adjust, fix, delete, um, smash, remove, cut out any of the thoughts I've ever had that feel uncomfortable. There they are, and maybe they will never go away. And who would you be without the thought that they should? Maybe you can still have a compulsion free behavior for the most part life. You don't have to do any of the heavy duty third degree burn kind of behaviors. Don't have to, I mean, I don't take drugs. I don't black out. I don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> I don't binge eat. And I still notice this mind chattering away like that forest of monkeys sometimes screeching and screaming hooting and hollering and all over the place and um it doesn't seem like though it draws me into some kind of really dense um difficult behavior yeah i don't steal i don't compulsively and i'm not saying that this is something i feel so great about i just notice it's not required even with a mind that's running the way it does so who would you be? Who would you be without your thoughts that the way you're thinking must end before you can find peace? What an interesting paradox. Could it be that even if your mind is running, doing what it does, you can be still, relax, take a deep breath, not act, do not even be moved to actions that would hurt you or anyone else. So, yahoo! <laughs> this mind is doing what it does. It's running. It's crazy. 
it's childish. It's like a teenager. It goes all over the place and gets very dramatic. Don't we love the drama sometimes? Aren't magnificent stories the most wonderful things? Isn't it amazing that we'll watch a movie, some incredibly joyful, heartbreaking movie, and in the sad parts, cry and feel for the main hero. You know, we relate to them. That's us. It's a story. Human beings are story makers and storytellers, story receivers. So I, for one, at least at this point in time, feel like I, it's okay that stories are there. Just believing them. One thing that's great about movies is we get to see a story in a film and we don't have to believe it's the absolute truth. In fact, we usually don't. So we suspend that disbelief, as they say in literary terms. It's suspended so that we can just be in the story and learn from it and enjoy and wonder what this mind is, what's happening in it, why it's operating the way it is. Wonder about that, but not get compelled to destroy or hurt or change it. Maybe acceptance, that's the deepest kind of acceptance you could ever imagine, is letting something be the way it is, but just not responding. All right, let me know how it goes.